In this lesson, I'll teach you everything you need to know about ANOVA testing, which is short for Analysis of Variance. This test is the most widely used statistical technique for testing the equality of more than two population means. If you've ever done any statistical testing in the past, you've definitely done this at one point in your career. In this video and the next, I'll be showing you how it's done manually. And the way it works is by comparing variation within samples to the variation between samples to assess the equality of the means. The technique will be demonstrated using this question, where an investigator wishes to compare the average time to relieve the headache pain under three distinct medications called drug A, B, and C. 15 patients who suffer from chronic headaches are randomly selected for the investigation, and five subjects are randomly assigned to each treatment. Notice that we have an equal amount of subjects in each treatment. Now, when you don't have that, where there is a discrepancy between one group and the other, we use a slightly different approach. The following data reflects time to relief in minutes after taking the assigned drug. Our task is to test whether the true mean times to relief under the three different drugs are equal. To do these types of problems, we have to follow a systematic approach. And the very first step in this method is to set up the hypothesis. The null hypothesis, which I'll denote as H sub zero, is that all of the means are the same. So nothing really happened. I'll write down the mean of this sample as mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3. The alternative hypothesis is the opposite, where we write down HA and at least one of these differ. The second step is to select the appropriate test statistic. What we're looking to find is the value of F observed. And as the name suggests, it follows the F distribution pattern. Now, F observed is a ratio that compares between group variability to a thin group variability. Finding these two quantities requires that you know how to find the sum of squares and degrees of freedom for within and between the groups. The calculations for these will be shown later on in this video. Once F observed is found, we'll use it to compare it to F critical, which we obtain from a table. Step three involves computing the test statistic, and this is where the infamous ANOVA table comes into play. The ANOVA table looks like this, and in order for us to fill this in, we have to start by finding the mean, standard deviation, and variance of all three groups. Now, given the level of statistics that we're learning here, I'm assuming that you already know how to find the mean of each group, the standard deviation and variance. In fact, you can find these three values using a calculator. I'm not going to waste time showing you how to find them. And here are the values that you should have found had you done it correctly. The mean of this group should have been 33. And notice that I'm using X bar as opposed to mu. When we're looking for the mean of a sample, we use X bar, whereas mu represents the entire population. This is just a small sample. So again, the average of this group happens to be 26. And for this group, it is 20. The rest of the information should look like this. This row is the variance and this is the standard deviation. Okay, let's go back to this table and begin filling this in. To find out the information for each of these empty cells, we use the following formulas. And we'll begin by finding the sum of squares for between the groups. That's done using this formula, where we take the average of the averages. So we take the average of 33, 26, and 20. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll write down x bar with these two dots. 33 plus 26 plus 20 divided by 3, 33 plus 26 plus 20, and we get 26.3 repeating. And according to the formula, we subtract it from each of the averages. So it was 26 decimal 3. That very first average was 33. 33 minus that, raised to the power of 2, plus we're taking the sum, and don't forget we have this letter N that represents the number of individuals per each group. Five plus, again, five bracket. That next was 26 
minus 26.3 raised to the power of 2, plus again 5. And finally, we had a mean of 20 minus 26.3 raised to the power of 2. Putting this all into your calculator, you should end up with the following value, 423.329. Also place that right here. Now we'll go ahead and find out the sum of squares within. For this, you have to do the exact same thing, except for the individual groups and their data. So starting with, let's say, drug A, we will take the average of drug A, which was 33, and subtract it from 30, like this. 30 minus 33 raised to the power of 2 plus 35 minus 33 raised to the power of 2 40 minus 33 raised to the power of 2, and you keep doing this, find out its sum, which is 130, and you do the same thing for the other two groups. So I'll show you this one, 25 minus 26 raised to the power of 2. You do the same thing for drug B and for drug C, and you add up their sums. Now I've done this already, so the sum of these you should end up with 70, and you can verify that on your own. And the sum for these ones should be 50. 130 plus 70 plus 50 gives us 250. And that is the value that you place into here, 250. Now we add these two values up, where you should get 673.329. We finished the first column in our ANOVA table. Now we do the degrees of freedom. Let's take a look at the formulas again we have k minus 1. k represents the amount of groups. We have three groups. So 3 minus 1 is 2. To find the degrees of freedom for within, we take the total number of individuals in the study, which happen to be 15, minus the three groups. 15 minus 3 is 12. And the total is n minus 1, which is 14. The rest of this is easy. So we need to now find the mean square, and that's done by taking this number and dividing it by 2. So I'll write down the mean square for between is 423.329 over 2. The mean square for within is 250 divided by 12. And the answers that we get for both of these, we will use to find our F observed. So F observed equals... MSB over MSW. Let's go ahead and figure those numbers out. 423.329 divided by 2, 211 decimal 6645 over 250 divided by 12, and that's 20.83 repeating. Now we can take 211.6645 divided by the answer, and that is 10.15, or approximately that. We filled in our analysis of variance table. We can go ahead and move on to step number four, which is where we start to make our decision. We will need the F distribution table to figure out the F critical. And to find the F critical, we use an alpha value of 0 0.05, the degrees of freedom we found for between, which was 2, and the degrees of freedom we found for within, which was 14. We look into our table, and you should end up with an F critical that is approximately 3.89. The F distribution looks like this. It takes on this pattern. 3.89, let's say, is over here. The value that we found for F observed was 10.15, and that goes well beyond the right of 3.89, this way. Therefore, F critical is less than F observed. And if the F critical is less than the F observed, then it falls in the rejection region, so we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis was that all of the means are the same. We have to reject this in favor of the alternative, which says that at least one population differs. The last step 
is to write a concluding statement that since f observed is greater than f critical, we have sufficient evidence at 0.05 significance level to say at least one drug differs. You always have to conclude on the alternative hypothesis. And so there you have it. That is how to use ANOVA testing to determine if two or more populations differ.